book lovers, so glad you're joining us today for this again and again author interview with Glenna Nellis, the author of these two books, <laughs> Good News, God Loves You, and Good News, It's Creation. I'm so excited to chat with her about her inspiration for these books, as well as all of the other books that she has written, and hear a little bit more about her heart and her author journey. I'm so glad you're joining us, and stay tuned to the end to find out who we're talking to next week. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to turn it around. It's like, why is it black? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad we got it figured out. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you here, Glennis, and to talk about your sweet little books. Um, as we get started here and people are joining us, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, first, thank you so much, Valerie, for inviting me. I'm really, um, I'm really honored that you would take the time to do that. And that little bird... That's just my bird clock that I should have taken the battery out. But <laughs> it's telling us we're on time. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah, we're not late. So um, I'm originally from England where I was a primary school teacher. And we came to live, now I live in Michigan, and, and um, I'm married to a pastor. And so we came in, um, it was way back in 1999 with our four young children, we came on an exchange program to Michigan. Okay. It's brilliant. It's like you can swap homes and cars um, with another pastor anywhere in the world who wants oh, wow. to do that. So it's like a way to experience ministry in another part Ooh. of the world. And it's, wow. it's for six weeks. Yeah, so we flew over the pond to Michigan. And the pastor from Michigan flew over the pond to Liverpool in, in England, which is where we live. Mm -hmm. and, and that for six weeks, Valerie, and, it, and it's great fun. And we just fell in love with Michigan. And so we came back the next year and our plan was, so this was 2000, right? Mm -hmm. So our, our plan was, let's see what we can learn about ministry in um, America all the great things. All the great and, things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, we'll, and we'll take it back to England. And okay. let's do that in five years. So we came on a five-year visa mm -hmm. in 2000. And we're still here. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we just, I don't know, we just loved it. And, you know, then our kids were growing up and they were meeting partners and it just became evident maybe our lives should be here. So, yeah, so I'm in Michigan. I'm married to David, who is a pastor. We have four grown children and four precious grandchildren. Oh, so yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> now, you have written all kinds of books for kids. Um, picture books like your latest release, devotionals, and I think the Wonder Bible also. And... Mm -hmm. uh, which has been the most challenging type of book to write for kiddos? Well, probably the longest ones. You know, as, as a children's author, your stories are typically short, you know, and usually the shorter the better. And so I'm not saying it's easy to write a short story because it's not. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I'll write a book, oh, I, but I don't know where to start, oh, I'll write a kid's book, you know, because they think... <laughs> That's, now, you and I know that that's not true. It's not easy. Even though you might not be writing a lot of words, you do need a different set of skills, you know, and it takes a lot of time and thought to to write something in a in a child-friendly way. Yes. But yeah, that every word has to count. <laughs> absolutely. That's right. When we talk about word count, it's every word has to count. Mm -hmm. Because you're not just writing for children, you're writing for the adults who read those books to their little ones. So it Very has true. to appeal to both, you know. Anyway, having said that, probably the most challenging books for me to write have been the longest ones um, so the I Wonder Bible that you mentioned mm -hmm. was um, 30 stories, 15 from the Old, 15 from the New Testaments. And so that was quite a challenge for me because that was the longest book I'd written um, to date. And that was published last year. Now, I've also just completed the edits on, I don't know if you're familiar with the Twas books. Yes. 
twas yeah. the night, but kind of like your what, twas the evening before Advent and Easter. You have several of those. I do, I do, yeah, all based on the Clementine more classic, you mm-hmm. know. So I just finished up the, the edits for Twas the Season of Lent, ah. which will publish in January 2024. And so now that was challenging because that, because we wanted to feature 40 days mm. it, it was 40 stories or devotions for families to work through. And so that was quite a project for me because, you know, 40, that's a lot of stories that to write. a lot of stories to write. <laughs> yeah. So probably the longest ones have been the most challenging for me. Yes, yes. Now, what was your inspiration for your good news uh, books that you just released? Mm-hmm. Well, Good news. I see them behind you, Valerie. Yes, you. Oh, go on. <laughs> I, just, I just need to work on my, you know, backdrop here and get it looking like yours. But, um, <laughs> so these little books, Good News, God Loves You and Good News, It's Creation. They are actually the, um, let's see, the fourth and fifth books in the Good News series. Mm-hmm. So, Oh, isn't it sweet when you see all the little hearts going up because people are listening. <laughs> Thank you, friends, for, for joining us. I hope I don't get boring. Um, <laughs> the inspiration for that series, well, let, so the first one was Good News, It's Easter. Mm-hmm. And what happened was it was about five or six years ago and I wanted to explore this notion that at Easter time, there's such a lot of surprises going on, like the biggest one being the surprise of Jesus stepping out of the cave. But it's such a season of new life. I mm-hmm. wanted to sort of, I wanted to help little ones realize that Easter is all about new life and resurrection, but in ways that they can understand. Yeah. So, for example the the surprise of maybe a tulip appearing when mm-hmm. you know be out of that little dark bulb in the ground yes or, or the surprise of a bunny finding it can bounce really high or the surprise of a a tadpole that suddenly grows these legs and can jump like a frog you know what i mean so i wanted to sell i wanted to look for all the little um new life things that mm-hmm. children would relate to yeah. and in my mind so i wrote this book the first in the series but it was called surprise it's easter okay so first like the text was surprise cheers the tulip springing from the ground i once was lost in darkness but now the sun i found mm-hmm. and so every verse started with surprise and then jesus said surprise shouts out jesus stepping <laughs> from the you know well mm-hmm. when i went to the publisher with it these are published by our daily bread mm-hmm. and they said well, we love it, you know, and I said, I've got these bo- these books called Surprise and I've written one called Surprise, it's Christmas. Ooh. And and um, another one, got, the next one is Good News God Made Me. Anyway, it was all about being surprised. And it's just brilliant, Valerie, what happens when you put your heads together and um, you sort of see your work from the angle of another person, this mm-hmm. being the publisher. So they said, we love it, Glennis, but this surprise thing, we're not sure if it works. We don't really like the surprise element. And I'm like, what? <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> I know it was for me. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's so cute, you know, mm-hmm. the, all these things being surprised. And so I said, okay, let me take a long walk, which is what I typically do if I if I'm suffering from writer's block or or I just, you know, can't think straight. So I, I remember, I distinctly remember going out for this long walk and I'm walking and walking and I'm puzzling and I'm turning it over in my head and I'm saying a prayer. Come on, God, if you want these books to be published, I need to something else rather than surprise. Mm-hmm. And then it came to me instead of using surprise, but it had to be two syllables, right? Right. Because it's rhyming so syllables count is important so i'm like 
oh my gosh it was like god just plopped it in my head <laughs> just call it good news yeah <laughs> instead, of, instead of surprise now it's good news cheers the tulip good mm -hmm. news shouts out jesus and and so because the gospel is good news yes and and so i'm like oh my gosh no it's going to be here run home huh <laughs> I'm like, how about if we call it good news? And then our daily bread are like, okay, let's sign the contract. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a long answer, wasn't it, to your question? But that's where the inspiration came from. Mm -hmm. The good news, it, it celebrates, originally it celebrates the resurrection and then good news, God made me. Um, so they're all rhyming. And then, yeah, the, late, the newest ones, good news, God loves you, because isn't that good news? Such good news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then good news, it's creation. So in the creation book, I just kind of, I thought it was fun. Suppose all creation was sort of celebrating themselves, you know. So it's good news, shout this, um, wait a minute, good news, laughs the sunshine, beaming bold and bright. God made me yes. for the Time, the moon to shine at night so all the things that god made shout out good news that's mm -hmm. the stars and then good news shout the mountains you know and this one ends with adam and eve saying good news whispers adam um reaching for eve's hand look at this amazing world we live here like god planned so yeah it and I never thought it would become a series of five, but there you go. <laughs> well, such sweet little truths that, you know, we can celebrate these things. You know, we were taught these stories over and over again as we grew up in the church, but to really celebrate them and really see that as good news is a place that these stories have to get to to really take root in our hearts. And I just love just the simplicity, but just the sweetness of each character just shouting this good news and shouting these truths to young minds. Yeah, well, thank you, Valerie. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're fun to read aloud. They are, and such cute little illustrations and fun characters to watch. And, and oh, I, know, I know I've got to give a shout out to Lizzie Walkley. I think, I think she's British, but... Um, she is just wonderful and um who couldn't love her illustrations you know yes. all the colors and all the cute uh, this is it this this little one um good news god loves you she did a really cute on each page there's this little blue bird i don't know if you can see it right mm -hmm. there on, on the cow's back and so that little blue bird is hiding on somewhere on every page and so, you know just little things like that yes. is really a thoughtful touch from her because it makes the book more interactive for yes. little ones yeah, yeah you know, kind always of something to look food. for right right very neat now um what does your family think of your writing <laughs> oh well i know i know they're all proud of me you know um Especially, I guess, when my first book was published, that was in 2014, and it was a book of Bible stories with Lift the Flat Love Letters from God. Yes, we enjoy and, those books around here. <laughs> oh, bless your heart, thank you. Well, you know, that was, it's always hard to break into the publishing world, and so, you know, I put a lot of work in, a lot of effort, and I never knew if that dream would come true especially since i quit halfway through that book i i literally quit because mm -hmm. i felt like i wasn't good enough and put it on the shelf and honestly it's a true story it sat there gathering dust for a year till my husband encouraged me to pick it back up so i think especially when i first became an author they were you know super proud of me and, mm -hmm. and they still are and, they're great my kids and my grandkids it's so fun to read my own words to them that has got to be really sweet mm -hmm. <laughs> now um <laughs> what has been the most impactful book in your life glennis mm -hmm. other than the bible 
I know, oh. that, I know that's number one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that that's what I was going to say. Um, it's so hard because I've been, ever since I was a little girl, I've been a reader, and an avid reader. I can remember running home from school in England and diving on my bed and devouring the this set of books by an author. You won't have heard of her because she's British and she's ancient, but um, she was called Enid Blyton and she wrote these, and they weren't Christian books. Mm -hmm. um, they were just these wonderful stories about these five kids who go on these amazing adventures. And um, those did have a big impact on me because I just devoured them. I think devour is a good word. And, and I think that's when I began to learn the power of story, mm -hmm. that the power that a book has to invite you in to the story. Yeah. And you're right there, part of it. You know, I was one of those kids and I was right along on their adventures. And I see Laura, Laura Sassy saying, <laughs> I, I read those. You yeah. did, Laura? That's, that's, that's You're not the me. only one. <laughs> that, that makes me feel so good. Yeah, well, just amazing. And so those books had a big impact on me mm -hmm. um, growing up. And then I would say another book that had a big impact once I started delving into the world of writing is the Jesus Storybook Bible mm -hmm. by Sally Lloyd-Jones. Yes. And, um, oh yeah, Laura said, maybe because we lived overseas. Yes, probably, yes, because yes. I don't think Enid Blyton books are really um, popular in the USA. But, um, yeah, when I started to delve into the world of publishing, I was working as a children's minister mm -hmm. here in Michigan. Okay. And... So part of my job was to look for Bibles, appropriate Bibles for the children. And and the reason I started writing is because our little church didn't have much money and curriculum was expensive. And so I decided, I'm, you know what, I'm going to write my own. These stories, these Bible stories are pretty cool. I'm just going to rewrite them. And, and that in the rewriting of them, I just fell in love, you know, with the creative process yes. and... And the way there's all I always say this, but there's always a new way to tell the old old story, you know. Yeah. And um, so that was when I picked up. I think it was the year it was published. It must have been like two thousand seven. Mm. This Jesus story book Bible by Sally Lloyd Jones. And now Sally and I differ theologically but that just didn't matter because her writing was absolutely beautiful and yes she she writes with humor she writes with i don't know poetry she her her writing sings it does she yeah. even has like a, a devotional that's things that make my heart sing and my kids love that yes yeah, so thoughts to make your heart sing mm -hmm. she is a phenomenal she's a beautiful writer so her books, not not just that Bible, but she's written um, loads of other books, secular too. And that's true. She's brilliant. She she's she she's a very inspiring person in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's pretty too. <laughs> very true. <laughs> <laughs> now, when did you first call yourself a writer, Glennis? Oh gosh, it's hard, isn't it? You know, you know this whole imposter syndrome. I, I've got, Valerie, I've, I'll have 30 books published by the end of this year, but still yeah. I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm a writer. I mean, okay, I, I can call myself a writer now, but there's still something in me that's like, well, don't brag about it, don't boast about it, you know. So I never call myself a writer till I published my first book, I think. Although I was clearly a writer before because I wrote for little magazines mm -hmm. and I wrote those Sunday school lessons, you know, for my teachers. But I think it was really when my first book got published, which is kind of sad because if people are listening in today or listening to the replay on YouTube and you're just starting out, you are a writer, mm -hmm. you are a writer. Um, it's just we, we have to believe in ourselves and 
and believe that it's okay to say you're a writer and feel good about it. Yes. yes. You don't have to be published to be a writer. So I hope Very that true. put people off, but that's just sort of where I, where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it takes a lot of... I don't know, soul searching to be able to claim what you are capable of doing and to say, you know, God made me a writer that I could, you know, have the privilege of telling stories like God has told stories through his word and the Bible. And so it's, it's a hard yeah. thing to grab onto. It's a hard thing to claim, but it's yeah. a sweet calling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. It's just, it's this line we walk, you know, of, of trying to remain humble as Christians mm -hmm. and, yeah. and give the glory to God for, for the gifts mm -hmm. of writing that we have, but also to believe in yourself and have the confidence, you know, to put yep. yourself there. Yeah. <laughs> that's always the challenge. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you could spend a day with another writer, um, who would you pick? Any writer, dead or alive? Who would you want to spend a day with? Um, well, probably Sally Lloyd-Jones. I would love to meet her. I would love to sit down with her because we're both British, mm -hmm. um, because we're both writers, because we're both Christians. We have a lot in common. I'm still, you know, a bit starstruck even to think about. She's a Zonda Kids author like I am. I was first published with Zonda Kids and so... And at one time, there was supposed to be an event that Zonda Kids were pulling together where, where me and Sally would be there. And, and I, I don't know what, I don't know if it, if it was because of COVID. Oh, I think it was. But honestly, like, I, I, would, I was quaking in my boots, I, you know. So, although I'd love to chat with her, I don't, I don't know. I'd be really starstruck. Yeah. In her presence. yeah. <laughs> and, I hear and you. Valerie, Valerie, I see that Lizzie Walkley joined. Hi, Lizzie. I think she's, I don't know, I think she's British, so maybe she's joining from England. Isn't that amazing? Like the powers of, of technology, Lizzie. yes. Yes, and if I wanted to meet an illustrator and sit down and chat with her, it would be Lizzie because your work, your work, Lizzie, is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And how could, how could I do it without you? <laughs> yeah, now she's saying hello. I'm so, I'm so happy you tuned in, Lizzie, and I gave you a a good shout out so and let's hope we do more books together yeah there we go yes most definitely <laughs> <laughs> too fun well glennis what is your favorite book oh oh my gosh um i have way too many but i will mention one because it, it's had a massive impact in my life it's still sitting on my bookshelf even though it's like 35 years old have you ever heard of a book called the jolly postman it sounds familiar but i don't think i've read it right well it it's, <laughs> oh it's brilliant everybody who's listening you have to look for the jolly postman and it's written by um let's see it's an author and illustrator couple janet and alan alberg laura knows it um published in England in 1984, the year of my eldest son's birth. And it took them five years to publish that book because the publisher wouldn't agree to what they were um, offering them, which was, it's a story of this little postman who rides his bike in England, as a lot of postmen do. Mm -hmm. And he, he's delivering letters to nursery rhyme characters. I mean, it's... Create, I mean, how creative. And so he delivers a like he delivers um, one to the three bears in the woods. And it, and, it, and it's from Goldilocks. It's an apology. Oh, I mean, who, who thinks of that except a wonderful creative team? And but the brilliant thing was, Valerie, which was why it was expensive is the pages were actual real envelopes with actual real letters inside. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, and so my kids um, would, they just loved it. I could still remember the little chubby fingers reaching in, pulling the letters out, opening up. This is an apology note from Goldilocks, you know. Um, and we just fell in love with that book, and I still have it. It's on my shelf. It's covered with tea stains and goodness knows what, but... <laughs> Now, that book became the inspiration for 
your love letters. Love yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, isn't that incredible how how God can use mm -hmm. these little things in our life? Um, yeah, that became the inspiration for my love letters from God. And so but that book sold millions of copies and it's it's available right here in the States. You know, I see it in Barnes and Noble at Christmas. Mm -hmm. There's there's the Christmas Jolly Postman, which is why I did Christmas love letters from God. <laughs> that that book is absolutely brilliant. And I wow. see people say, Yeah, who's that Heather? Sounds so fun. It absolutely is. Yeah, and Lizzie knows the Jolly Postman, yeah. <laughs> Everybody in England knows the Jolly Postman. <laughs> Yeah. too fun that sounds like one i'm gonna have to find <laughs> around here oh it's brilliant your kids would love it i'm sure they would mm -hmm. <laughs> whether it would survive my three boys that's the other question <laughs> well i know it's true yeah sometimes i was afraid that i would lose the letters but we never did so oh that means they're true treasures yeah now what are you reading right now glennis <laughs> Well, I'm one of those I'm one of those silly people who has like four books on the go all at once, and I, I I keep meaning not to do that, but I can't help it. Okay, so I've just finished up I've just finished up this fabulous book of fiction, and it won a Goodreads award, and it's called The Apothecary. Oh yes, I think I've read that one. That's really good. Oh my God. She's a brilliant writer. Mm -hmm. that, like set in England in the 18th century or something. Yes. And she flips back from the 17th century to the 21st century. Oh, it's amazing. I've just finished that. <laughs> but on my nightstand, I have Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. If there's mm -hmm. any writer on here, she's brilliant, Anne Lamott. And um, so Bird by Bird is like her writing tips. Yes. And then also in right in front of me, I'm plowing my way through big pictorial encyclopedias of the Bible because I'm I'm writing I'm I'm delving into writing for adults, Valerie. You must pray oh for my. me. <laughs> I don't even know if it will go anywhere, but I've I was I'm sort of taken with the idea of writing the gospel according to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Yeah. That because would be an interesting story for sure. No, because don't you want to hear about Jesus from her point of view? From so a mother's I'm, point of view. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, and so the other book I'm reading is called The Testament of Mary. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, it's by uh, somebody called Tobin, I think. I can't remember his name, and it's in my other room. But yeah, so I've got about four books on on the go. Very neat. Yeah, I usually have a stack of books that I'm reading at one time and usually takes longer to get through them all because I'm reading them all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm also reading in the morning. I like my devotional is by Henry Now and it's called Here and Now. Mm -hmm. Henry Now, and, um, if you don't know about him, he was a Catholic priest, just amazing writer and amazing man. So I love his words. Henry Very Now. neat. I'll have to mm -hmm. check that out. Now, what can we expect next from you? Well, um, you know, this publishing life keeps me busy. Thank you for all those hearts, friends. It's so sweet. Um, this little baby, I know it's backwards, right? But it's called Snuggle Time Love. Oh, another Snuggle and Time book. I know. This is my first copy, and it releases... Uh, like November 28th and the illustrations are cute they're a bit like Lizzie Walkley's this is called an illustrator called C. Bisco and mm -hmm. what I did was I took uh, 1 Corinthians 13 you know mm -hmm. love is patient love is kind love um, is not envious is not boastful and so I tried to write it like how do you explain love is not proud to little ones you right. know so so I tried to, I'll, I'll read a little example. Um, this is Love is Not Proud. So do you know what love is? It means I won't be proud. Even if I win the race, I won't be shouting loud. Love means no more bragging about what I can do. 
now you know what love is it's celebrating you um so it's it's thank you i'm a bit biased <laughs> it's precious <laughs> i can't wait for it to come out so yeah that's number i think it's number 7 in the in the snuggle time board book series so so fun i know that's the next one and then i've got three coming out next year the first one is it's a picture book that's really precious to my heart and it's called wherever you are okay and from beaming books and it's based what inspired it is the true story of my eldest grandson who is 11 now but when he was 3 I got to look after him mm -hmm. and he was standing at my front window watching the snow fall oh. and it was such a I don't know it was such a god moment that I took a picture and I had the picture of him by the window because after a minute he turned around and he said grandma was god oh. and then Yeah so he must have been thinking about God. Yeah. And I you know I just said well Xander God is in the snow mm -hmm. and God is in the air and God is right here with us now and I remember he said is God in my belly? <laughs> <laughs> you know but, but that book became the inspiration for wherever you are and it just explores that simple but powerful truth that wherever you are god is there and so that sounds so sweet i know it's dedicated to him uh, that comes out in january then i have another little mole gives thanks comes out Ooh. in yeah in Ooh. early fall i know <laughs> little mole gives thanks he's set in this big forest feast in the woods and <laughs> he invites these important people firefighter fox mm -hmm. and principal porcupine and mare moose and none of them can come valerie they've all got excuses mm -hmm. so it's a bit like the parable of yes, the great the wedding family. feast yes yes in the bible so um that comes out early fall and then a little bit after that i've got oh i'm excited it's a little christmas board book it's called the first christmas read and rhyme and mm -hmm. there it, it's got the rhymes missing so the child can guess the rhyme that's hidden under the flap oh how fun i know so how sweet i know so i'm yeah i'm heading for another busy year but i love all of it and i'm so blessed to be part of this journey you know uh, yes it's amazing all that you've accomplished and just the sweet books that you are allowing kids to walk through fun things biblical things and you know just sweet truths that sometimes we adults need to hear too so <laughs> we've enjoyed all of it now uh where can people find out more about you if they don't know where you are yet well i'd love um yeah i'd love for anybody to connect with me i am the only glennis nellist in the whole wide world so i'm easy to find <laughs> my website is glennisnellist.com and i'm going to spell my name for you it's g l e n y s and then nellist n e l l i s t the rhyme <laughs> glennis nellist yeah. um but i'm on obviously here on instagram twitter facebook are my main platforms and mm -hmm. good read called but um yeah so i'd love to connect with anyone and answer any questions i Thank you Heather for saying that you're inspired today. I'm I'm so glad. And I don't know if anybody had questions Valerie because honestly I don't want to touch my phone cuz I might flip my camera around again. <laughs> I've been watching them and mostly it's been just encouragement and people just saying how much they, you know, like the books that you like and how they much they appreciate you. So, we haven't had any questions. <laughs> Okay that's great then. Oh well thank you Valerie so much for having me and thanks everybody for listening. It was great to meet you and Valerie where can I find this after? I know it'll be on YouTube right? It will be here. I will send you a link with the YouTube uh link I guess with the, yes with the video so that you can have uh that to pass on to anybody that you want to and mm -hmm. then um it definitely will be inside my uh live 
archive also. So okay. several places right. to find it. All right. Well, I'll be sure to share it. So yeah, just an encouragement if anybody out there who's right. I did see. I did see somebody said that they just self-published their first book. That's brilliant. And self-publishing now is so great, isn't it? Yes, for, it is. For, you know, for um, children's book authors, I, I see so many successfully doing that. I, I'm daunted by that. I wouldn't know how to do it, but. I'm I'm celebrating you. So yeah, keep keep writing and That's believing. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Glennis. It has been a joy to have you on here and share your your heart and your books with all these friends and new friends and old friends. And we look forward to seeing all that you have coming out in 2023. Thank you so much, Valerie. Thank you, friends. All right. Bye thank bye. you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for joining me and Glennis Nellis today in our author interview. I'm so excited to see what she has coming up next. And next week, I am celebrating my second anniversary of this blog. And I'm so excited to celebrate that with Tama Fortner, the author of My Advent Nativity and many other wonderful resources for families and kids. So I can't wait to talk to her next week. Thursday, October 20th at 1 p.m. Central Time. I hope you will join us.